In this week's episode, we'll be travelling to Belgium for the World Series by Renault to witness Petronas' very own Jasman Jafar. Hey race fans, join me right here in Brussels to meet none other than Jasman Jafar. And in a very special Through the Chicane segment, we head out to Brixworth, England. Join me right here at the Mercedes AMG High Performance Powertrains as we check out some of the F1 engines. And later on, we'll be meeting up with Mr. Ross Brown. We'll be talking a little bit about the Silver Arrow. Hi, I'm Jasmine Jaffa, and this is Motorsports at Petronas. You gotta run, run, run. You gotta run, run, run. The 2012 Vice Champion of the Cooper Tires British F3, Jasmin Jafar starts his 2013 campaign right here in the World Series by Renault. Now touted to be the springboard onto the Formula One for many young drivers, I'll be watching Jasmin Jafar burn some rubber right here in the historical Circuit du Spa Francochamp. Circuit du Spa Francochamp was designed in 1920 and is known for hosting the Formula One Belgian Grand Prix, Spa 24 Hours and the 1000 km Spa Endurance Races. The original triangle-shaped racing course used public roads between three Belgian towns of Spa, Malmudi and Stavelou. Originally 15 km long, the circuit is now 7 km long but still a fast and hilly route through the lush forest, rough terrain, rolling hills and ridges. This is the battleground for the World Series by Renault. The World Series by Renault features four international championships. The first and flagship being the Formula 3.5 series, followed by the Euro Cup Formula Renault, then the Euro Cup McGain Trophy and lastly the Euro Cup Clio. Now this top class motoring event opens its doors free of charge to the public, making it an instant fan favourite. Now Jasmine will be joining us shortly, so you want to stick around. Thank you so much for being here okay. with us, we are super excited for you. New season, new series, how are you holding up? Well, it's a new challenge for me, for sure. It's a big step up from Formula 3 to Formula Renault 3.5. I'm really enjoying it. Um, the challenges are totally different and um, it's a brand new car and uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Well, the, it, speaking of the brand new car, um, tell us how different it is from the previous series that you were riding. Well, the power alone is, is massive. I mean, in Formula 3, it's, it's a 2 litre, 240 horsepower and World Series is a 520 horsepower V8. Uh, you know, engine. The lap times are not f far off from Formula One. Some tracks are six seconds off, some are seven. Um, but it's it's a really quick car. It has loads and loads of downforce. So, yeah, it's a it's a good car, a good feeder series to, to Formula One, I would say. Okay, well, it's you're in the new generation of 3.5 World Series Formula Series car. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that help you prepare for the Formula One? Well, I. I've driven the, the Formula 1 only only very very little amount of mileage but um, what's important is, is to getting used to driving the amount of downforce and the amount of power it has. Um, other than that, there's still a lot of prep to do because um, to develop a car comes with experience as well and in Formula 1 it's all about um, development and, and technology and development. But um, yeah, I mean it's, it's a good feeder series, there's loads of running for a young driver like myself, uh, it goes to Formula 1 tracks. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a good boost and mileage for us. Well, speaking of prep, um, has the mental and physical preparation been different from your previous series? For sure, for sure. I mean, uh, the mental it has to be the same. It's the same focus and the same mindset. It's to do well and, and never stop pushing. Um, the physical side of things had to double up. Uh, honestly, I had to bulk up some weight and bulk up some muscles because these cars has no power steering and it's very, very heavy to drive. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, it's your prep and it's how much you want to push and, and, and to get ready for this course. You don't want to struggle uh, in a race weekend, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we're at the Circuit de Spa Francochamps, right? It's a new, totally new circuit. Um, and many people tout it as being a springboard into the Formula One. What do you have to say for that? Well, I've, I've raced here um, over the ladders uh, in the junior categories in BMW and Formula 3. Um, I had good memories here with finishing on the podium. Uh, and now stepping up in the, in, in, and I would say that the, the highest step before Formula 1. And, and it's been amazing racing here. Um, I had an awesome free practice yesterday, which um, driving this car around the circuit is incredibly quick. Um, but yeah, we, we're still um, waiting to, to see what's the end result and uh, hopefully it turns out well. So the Circuit de Spa Francochamps has a lot of chicanes being talked about. I mean, you have the Air Rouge Radion yes. and uh, Blanchiment. Yes. Which will be your favourite and tell us why? I like uh, Pouan, to be honest, which is the downhill left-hander. It's the quickest corner on the circuit. Um, I, I like high-speed corners personally. So, um, this corner we're going through about 220 minimum speed, which is fairly quick on there. That's very fast. And uh, yeah, that's, that's my favourite, Pouan. Well, being under the Petronas banner, you had the opportunity to be exposed to many of the F1 workings. For example, the Mercedes-AMG Petronas Formula 1 team. Uh, you've been in the pit, you've seen the behind the scenes. How, does this, how has this exposure helped you um, prepare for your F1? It's a good question actually. I, I, um, I started going to the Grand Prix set 2010, so it's been three years. Um, it's been a really big help for me because communication with the engineer is very important. So there's different ways with how Nico and Michael communicates and now Nico and Lewis communicate. Um, after there are the debriefs, um, sometimes debriefs you have to go straight forward, straight to the point. I know in Formula 1 drivers, they have very limited amount of time and they go straight to the point of what the problems are and they go through a checklist, which I think is very professional and that gave me a good idea in my junior category to have the same mindset. So that's one thing. Another thing, the simulator gives me a chance to work with F1 engineers and see how they, how they work and how their style is. So also the same. Uh, when I'm doing my junior categories, that gives me a, a good um, benchmark with, with my engineer. But uh, at this level already in, in Formula Renault 3.5, the, the teams are, are, are so professional. I mean, they're just a step below Formula 1, you know, so they, they, they're, really, they're really, really good. So. Now, the World Series by Renault is the last stop for many young drivers who are eyeing for their golden ticket into the F1. Does that give you added pressure or does it relieve the pressure knowing that you're this close to the prize? Well, um, it's, it's, it's like the last step of going to school or going to uni, really. This is like the degree level. There's still loads for me to learn. I mean, um, at this level, you're doing pit stops, um, you know, the de development gets, um, you know, smaller and everything gets more precise. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good learning curve like myself. Of course, there's a bit of pressure and it's good to have um, good pressure because it improves yourself as a driver. And yeah, so it's, it's a good feeder series. So. All right, thank you so much for being with us today. But before you go, we got a little surprise for all you. All right. And that's the rapid fire. <laughs> In no particular order, name all seven of Harry Potter's fantasy novels. Um, Philosopher's Stone. Bang. Chamber of Secrets. Bang. President of Azkaban. Bang. Uh, Half Blood Prince. Okay, I'll <laughs> take that. Uh, Goblet of Fire. Boom. And. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, Deathly Hollows. Nice, six. Well, you missed one out, we'll give that for you for All free. All right, cool. All right, next. David Beckham recently announced his retirement. Name four clubs that he has played with. My United, Real Madrid, um, Paris Saint-Germain, and Ali Galek. Boom! All right, next. United States President Benjamin Franklin is on a US $100 bill. Which president is on the $1 bill? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Washington. George Washington. Boom! Okay. All right, next. Name the smallest country in the world. Vatican City. You're good! <laughs> All right, next. The author of the Harry Potter novels is J.K. Rowling. What does the J stand for? Uh, Juliet? No. Next, the hand of God goal 
was a controversial goal in the 1986 FIFA World Cup. Right. Name the two countries that was part of this controversy. I gotta give it a miss. Next, it would, be, it would have been Argentina versus England. Oh, yes, that's it, yeah. All right, this one I'm pretty sure you'll get. Name Jay-Z and Beyonce's baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have no idea. I don't... Blue Ivy. Don't worry about it. It's the next one. Name the members. Name all the members of the Beatles. Um, I gotta give it a miss. <laughs> next, which city will host the 2016 Summer Olympics? Uh, Brazil. Yes, sir. In Brazil, which city? Uh, Rio. Yes. Rio de Janeiro, <laughs> thank you very much for playing, man. Thank you. You did well. Good luck today, and uh, we hope the best for you. Thank you. When he puts his mind to it, rest assured that Jasmine Jafar will give his 110%. Now, with his new campaign for the 2013 season, I can't wait to see what's in store. So we wish him the very best. I'm here in Brixworth, England, where the population is only 5,200 people. But don't be fooled by the sleepy facade, because this is the home of the Mercedes AMG high performance powertrains. So let's go check out how some F1 engines are made. The Mercedes Formula One engine factory is involved in the entire engine process with engineers covering each stage of the development cycle of the Mercedes-AMG Petronas engines from the concept, design, simulation, manufacturing, assembly, test and analysis. They also develop engines for Vodafone, McLaren, Mercedes and Force India F1 teams. For individuals who want to have a career in Formula 1, this would be the best place to start. Enough of the technical side team. I'm off to see Mr. Ross Braun. He's the team principal and mastermind behind the Mercedes AMG Petronas Formula One team. Hopefully, he'll share some trade secrets. First up, tell us what do you think about the 2013 F1 W04 Silver Arrow? Um, I think we've made a good step with the current car. I think uh, the reorganization of the engineering group, which we undertook last year, has come through with this, uh, the car we're racing now. And um, there's probably some features that we can talk about, but it's just the general engineering and the, the organization, the preparation uh, behind the car that's most important. We reorganized the aerodynamic group under a new leadership, and uh, that started to produce um, stronger results. And um, we've got uh, Aldo Costa, who is um, in charge of the, the design and engineering of the car. He's very experienced, somebody I'll work with in the past. So let's say there's some features we can discuss, but the main thing is the engineering team behind the car is much stronger. Could you tell us a little bit about the specifications about the engine? Yeah, well, next year's engine is quite a big, big change. Um, so what we're facing next year is a small capacity turbocharged engine, as opposed, currently we have a, a, a V8 normally aspirated engine. Next year we have a small capacity turbocharged engine, 1.6 litres. Um, it will rev a little less, um, but not much. Uh, but the main thing about it is it's a hybrid. There's a lot of energy recovery and energy um, injection into the, into the, uh, uh, the powertrain. I think we should really think of it as a powertrain next year. We've got an um, uh, electric motor for the kinetic energy. So that's connected directly to the crankshaft and that electric motor will take um, power out when the engine's, when the car's braking and then it will put that into a battery and then put that back in again when the car's accelerating. But the very interesting one is the, uh, is the electric motor that's connected to the um, turbocharger because that's an electric motor or generator that can use surplus energy from the turbocharger when the turbocharger is running and it doesn't need to provide the compression for the charge air, then we can put that into the electric motor, put that back into the batteries. And then also we can spin the, uh, the turbocharger up to avoid lag, uh, so that the lag problem 
uh, goes away completely because using that electric motor we can spin the turbocharger up. So there's quite a complex cycle of, of um, energy going around the whole powertrain with the result that we can probably get very similar power outputs to where we are now for about two thirds of the amount of fuel that we're racing with at the moment. Wow. So, no, it's pretty impressive. At the moment we're racing, uh, doing a race with about 150 kilos of fuel. Next year we'll do it with 100 kilos of fuel. Well, it's almost like a hybrid performance car. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. And I think what's really good about it is it's become back, come back to relevant technology again. You know, all, our, all of our road cars, all of our vehicles are moving in, in this direction to make greater efficiency. And I think it's a, it becomes a much more attractive challenge and project for manufacturers, such as Mercedes or uh, now Honda are coming back in. And um, it adds some relevance to all that work. Now, what's your personal take on the phasing out of the V8? Do you think it's a positive move for the F1? Yes, yeah, definitely. I think for the reasons I've just described, that um, it is a uh, uh, very important step. I think the, the normally aspirated high revving V8 had become a little bit of a dinosaur. And I think the new hybrid engine, hybrid power plant we've got for, for next year is, is, as I say, got much more relevance. So it's very positive. Now, you mentioned before that um, you've made strides in aerodynamics. Now, could you elaborate a little bit about that? Um, well, again, it's, it's a lot to do with the organization. We've, we've brought in a new head of aerodynamics. He's looked at how we operate. He's looked at areas that we need to strengthen, um, particularly in areas such as CFD, computational fluid dynamics, where we're, we're creating models to simulate in the computer how the airflow goes around the car. And that's an area that we've strengthened a lot in the last 12, 18 months. But I think just uh, you know, Mike Elliott, the new chap in charge of Aero Group, has just brought uh, some fresh thinking into, uh, into the department. It is the most, you know, certainly one of the most uh, powerful performance areas of the car. The aerodynamics and I think now the engine next year, they'll be the two key areas for the performance of the car. And. Um, you know, Mike has uh, brought some fresh thinking about uh, the approach to the job and that then generates the ideas. I don't think we, we pick on individual ideas, we look at the approach, certainly I do. And yeah, if I see lots of ideas being generated, then the system's working. You know, the management's working, the department's working, that's what I'm looking for. Could you tell us a little bit about the uh, five element wing design? Yeah, and, and yeah, this perhaps is a good example, the, you know, the front wing is crucial to the performance of the car because that manages the airflow over the rest of the car. And if the wing is not in harmony with the rest of the car, then you, know, you can do things on the car, the bodywork and so on, and you don't get the most from it because the front wing has destroyed the quality of the flow by then. So you know, the idea of the type of wing we've designed is, is to create the downfalls from the wing, but then leave lots of opportunity for the flow that's coming off the wing then to be used in the rest of the car. So it's, uh, it, yeah, its strength is, or its objective, um, is to ensure that we, we have plenty of opportunity to manage and take the most from the airflow that's downstream of the front wing. And uh, for us, the five element wing was the best way of achieving that. Well, still on the subject of aerodynamics, um, could you tell us why Mercedes choose to continue with the uh, push rod front suspension and the pull rod rear suspension? What we try and avoid is change unless there is a justification for it because every time you make a change then that involves resource that you have within the team having to implement that change and having to develop the designs for that change and so on. So any change we make in the car has to earn its, its has to be justified, has to earn its place. And a simple thing such as going from um, a push rod front suspension to a pull rod front suspension will probably take you know, six or eight of our engineers several months to, to sort out all the, the packaging and sort out the new systems and sort out the different ways of doing it. So can you put that resource into some other area of the car where you get a, a greater return on the effort you make? And that's generally how we look at it. So, there may be a very small aerodynamic advantage, perhaps, we haven't established it in doing a pull rod front suspension instead of a push rod, 
But when you look at the amount of work that's involved, it's not justified in our view. So we leave things alone unless we can see a very clear performance gain. Um, because you know, that resource, that number of people, that number of hours that we would need to work, if we put that into a different area where we get much better return on our investment, then uh, we, we get a quicker car. So we leave things alone unless we see uh, a genuine benefit. And uh, I think last year was the first year we went to a poor rod rear suspension. It's still working well. And uh, I'm pretty certain we'll still be doing the same next year. Now, where does the Petronas Sintim oil come into this equation? Well, it's, it's particularly critical with this new engine. Um, you know, with a new engine comes a whole new series of challenges, and uh, particularly with a turbocharged engine, because you've got um, the turbocharger itself to look after. And uh, so the fact that we have such a strong partner uh, in Petronas means that we can develop the oil and the design of the engine in parallel. We're not, not being held back. And so the Petronas engineers and the Mercedes engineers have been working together to, to take the engine forward. And um, it's critical that we have uh, a partnership of the type we have with Petronas, the strength of the partnership, the technical side. Because otherwise, if we're just buying an oil off the shelf to, to run in our turbocharged engine, then we don't get these opportunities to really push the boundaries in, in all the areas. So not only with the oil, but to some degree with the fuel, there's all these opportunities to work right at the cutting edge uh, with Petronas. And it means we'll gain lap time. You know, we will gain lap time and we will gain reliability because of the close partnership. And it, it's a fantastic opportunity next year with this new technology to really um, get an advantage. All right. Well, that's all from us. Thank you so much, Mr. Brown. We okay. wish you all the best for the rest of the season. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much for joining me, guys. I'm Darren Lee, and this is Motorsports at Petronas. Now, don't forget to log on to www.petmos.com.my for all the information about your favorite teams, drivers, and race results. Jasmine Jafar starts his 2013 campaign right here in Circuit du Spa. Yeah, I got it wrong. Now, touted to be the springboard onto the F1 for many young drivers, I'll be watching Jasmine Jafar burn some rubber right here. <laughs> so long. I'll be watching Jasmine Jafar burn some rubber right here in the historical champagne shop hall. Okay. <laughs> no one says okay. No one says rolling.